It is a picture-perfect day in Golden, Colorado. And in this old mining town lies a gem of a stadium, home to Colorado School of Mines. Marv K Stadium, the oldest football field west of the Mississippi. Today, Mines can earn a spot in the Division II National Championship game for the first time ever. But the Shepherd Rams from West Virginia stand in the ore digger's way. It is the national semifinals in the Division II playoffs. Colorado School of Mines, the two seed, they have won 12 in a row since an 0-2 start. Shepard, the three seed, they are 13-1. And, and the winner of this one will be one step closer to the summit in Division II. On top of that mountain, the defending champion, Ferris State, they advanced to the title game of the win over West Florida earlier today. Hi there and welcome along with the winningest quarterback in Rice history, Taylor McCarg. I'm Ted Emmerich. So last night in the FCS playoffs, UIW beat Sacramento State 66-63 in a roller coaster ride of a game. There is a chance we see something similar with the offenses on the field today. We absolutely have the blueprint for a game just like that in this game. Two of the best offenses in all of Division II football, led by two of the best quarterbacks in all of Division II as well. Tails is the call. Mines leads the nation in scoring and it is a at tails, just guys, under 47 toss. points Shepherd per game. You see their numbers the on the right the side of the screen. The Shepard, not far behind, fifth in the nation in scoring. It's not often you have a legitimate NFL prospect in Division II, Taylor. It's like spotting a unicorn. Well, Shepard has one in quarterback Tyson Bajan. All of the accolades for Tyson Bajan and well-earned Harlan Hill Award winner last year. He's a finalist for it again this year. You'll see him in the Senior Bowl and talking about a guy that NFL scouts don't often see them targeting a Division II quarterback, but they certainly are here with Tyson Bajan for Shepard. And then on the other side, John Matoka, quarterback for Colorado School of Mines, has done everything for this program, over 4,200 yards passing, 45 touchdowns. The thing that I'm interested to pay attention to today for John Matoka is his ability to run the football. Had over 100 yards rushing last week against Angelo State. A lot of broken plays. He kept them in the game, kept them ahead of the sticks. That's a key for Shepard here today, try and slow down John Matoka and his ability to run the football. Now, Brandon Moore, Mines' coach, told us this week all due respect to Tyson Bajan but I think John is the best player in Division 2. I find out here today in Golden. Shepard has won the toss and Shepard wants the ball as we check out Mines' season to this point under their first year head coach Brandon Moore the former OU linebacker won a national championship with the Sooners in 2000. The win over Angelo State avenged one of their two losses early in the year. And Ernie McCook on the other side in his fifth season. His conference is coach of the year. Their win last week in the quarterfinals over IUP, avenging a loss in the conference championship game just before the playoffs began. Jacob Haney, Haney is ready to kick it away. Who will join Ferris State in the Division II National Championship? Let's find out. And Mines will start from the 25. John Matoka accounted for all six touchdowns last week in the win over Angelo State. He has racked up 50 on the year, Taylor. I love what Brandon Moore said to describe Matoka. He calls him a creator. He said he was the moon and stars for this program. Talked about his leadership and how he his teammates gravitate towards him and you see that we've been here since yesterday you see just how he interacts with his teammates clearly a guy that his teammates rally around again we talked about over 100 yards rushing last week against Angelo State they are taking the gloves off and his ability to run the football have to win here today expect him active in the run game as well senior from Magnolia Texas just north of Houston Play action on first down, and he hits one of his two 1,200-yard receivers, Josh Johnston, carrying Dante Harris in the corner for a ride to the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 20. I love a nice, easy, quick completion out to the flat. Quick hitch, get it to Josh Johnson in space. We've talked a lot already about John Matoka, and for good reason, but Josh Johnson, Max McLeod, Michael Zeman at running back, all over 1,000 yards of production for this Ore Diggers team. Coaches love that there's no whining. They spread it around. Zeman, a 1,200-yard back, pushes forward for three to the 48-yard line. Zeman is Mines' all-time leading rusher. 
more than 4,000 yards in his career. You see that captain patch on his chest, another guy. We're going to say a lot of names like this today. You guys that have been in this program for a long time, tough and hard-nosed. That's how head coach Brandon Moore described Michael Zeman. And seven for the Orgeners at their own 48. On second and seven, fake it to Zeman. And pitch it out to Mason Karp, the dependable receiver on the outside. And Karp has a first down in Shepard territory. It's a pickup of 10. Right now, Shepard just playing off coverage. It's a too high look, playing quarters, and this is a nice, easy completion. Flip it out into the flat. It's two for one. Safety's so far back. Every time, if Shepard's going to be that backed off that far, that's an easy five or six yards every time. That RPO Taylor, a staple of this playbook, using the bubble screen to perfection. Now the slant. Max McLeod with his first catch. McLeod leads the team. Now more than 1,250 yards receiving. He gains 10. This is a good-looking drive to start for mine. Max McLeod, 6'3", 205 pounds. He's got a wide catch radius. This quick game right now, it's really what the ore diggers have gone with for this opening drive. A lot of quick completions. Get the ball out of John Matoka's hand quickly. Mines coaches told us this week they would love long drives to keep Tyson Bajan on the sideline for as long as possible. Picking up yardage in chunks right now. Man in motion is McLeod. Matoka back to throw. Matoka airs it toward the end zone and broken up. Intended for Johnston. Dante Harrison, the true freshman from our nation's capital, broke it up. In that time, Shepard, you see all the bodies close to the line of scrimmage. They end up in a seven-man box. Safeties walk down. This is really on John Matoka. They've got to get this ball out a little bit earlier. Running the post route. If he gets rid of this earlier, that's a touchdown for Mines. Harrison has the length to compete with Johnston. At 6-1, Johnston checks in at 6-2. Second and 10. Now Zeman up the gut. He is denied. Solomon Alexander, the fifth-year senior, along with Kyle Smith, the sixth-year senior, are right there. And you're starting to see Shepard adjust their scheme in real time. First few plays of this drive, they were backed off. They weren't blitzing, not a lot of pressure, giving up those quick completions. Last two plays, man defense and coverage, a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage, setting up first, third, and long here for the War Diggers. Mines needs 12, and Matoka is in an empty gun. Four-man rush. Matoka can scramble. Matoka across the 30. He's well short of the first down. Shepard closes in. It's a gain of seven, fourth down. And a nice job by the Shepard defense rallying to the football, bringing John Matoka down. This right here, this type of play, broken play, quarterback scramble, that's what they busted Angelo State last week on several times. Some of the longer plays for the offensive production last week for Mines came from John Matoka on busted plays just like that. A really nice job by Shepard rallying to the football, getting off the field. This would be a season long for Jacob Click, the senior who took over the place kicking duties in the playoffs. Can it sneak in? It cannot. Wide right. And Shepard and their head coach, Ernie McCook, have a stop to start things out here in the semifinal. Click took over for Matthew Ike, who was the place kicker in the regular season. The coaches said that Click's trajectory was just much better. The flight of the ball, that had the flight, just not quite the accuracy. And now we see Tyson Bajan. Zero FBS offers coming out of high school in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Broke the NCAA record for career touchdown passes at all levels last week, and now he's on the NFL radar. From the 27 on first down, Ronnie Brown falls forward for a couple to the 29. Brown has racked up close to 1,700 yards this season to give Shepard some balance, balance offensively. And if you haven't watched Mines on the other side, specifically on defense, this is one of the more active fronts you'll see in all of college football, not just Division II. These guys are well coached. They're always in the right spot. And what that means is you can bring pressure from a lot of different ways, and they play sound coverage on the back end. Now Taylor Mines leads the nation with 61 sacks on the year. 
Second and eight. Bajant gets it out quickly, and the pass is knocked away. Alfonso Foray had a shot, but Mason Pierce, the senior corner from Bolverde, Texas, broke it up. And a good play by the captain, Mason Pierce, from the corner position. He's in phase, he's in a great spot, doesn't panic, recognizes receiver reaching for the ball, get that right hand out there and cause the PBU. Third and eight, and now Mines has the chance to really heat up Tyson Bajan. Brown motions into the slot. Mines brings just four. Bajan off balance, and Brown cannot bring it in. Fourth down. Pressure early from Mines. They didn't get home for the sack but it moved Tyson Bajan off his spot, caused a little bit of a high throw. Working the shallow cross. Into the top right of your screen. You don't see it there, trying to get the shallow cross coming across to Ronnie Brown, but that pressure forced the Aaron throw from Tyson Bajan, a quick three and out. Mason Pierce. Ryan Barrick punts it away. Pierce, an all-conference punt return of this season. Across the 35. Pierce trying to cut it back, and he dives across the 45. A nice return by Pierce. Mines with excellent field position. Their offense back on the field after this. So the Harlan Hill Trophy is the Heisman in Division II. Colorado School of Mines has two Harlan Hill Award winners. Chad Freehoff in 2004, Justin Dvorak in 2016. John Matoka could win the award this year. Tyson Bajan could repeat as the Harlan Hill Award winner. Both finalists on the field today in the Division II semifinals. Taking over at their own 46, here is John Matoka and Mines. And Matoka getting loose. Such an adept scrambler. He's close to the first down marker, and he picks it up. Gain of 11. He, he got Emilio Pena. Strong side linebacker. Watch at the top of the screen when he takes off. Number four triggers and Elio Pena right there, just a little bit of a pump fake. That is what you have to be disciplined with. If you watch John Matoka on tape, he hits some pump fakes five, six yards downfield, well past the line of scrimmage. It's something he uses really effectively. Taylor, tough thing for Shepard today. Their leading tackler, linebacker Dwayne Grantham, out with a broken finger. First down, play action, bubble screen. This is Max McLeod. Bumped out by Harrison near the 35-yard line. It's a gain of nine. Seen it three times now already. Just the quick bubble screen. They're cracking down Josh Johnson. Due to his helmet coming off. Corners are backed off right now for Shepard. That's just an extension of the run game. And right now, Mines is getting six, seven, eight yards a pop anytime they want it on those bubble screens. Might have heard the announcement from our referee Cameron McNye. Malik Holloway, Shepard's defensive end, out for this play after his helmet came off. Second and one, Zeman, oh, just trucked a man. And he's got the first down. It's like trying to tackle a fire hydrant. Coming right at you, boom. How about that for the first down? You think that sends a message to the other side? True freshman JT Kwame Yao taking Grantham's place. Hello. Fresh set of downs for Colorado School of Mines. Again, the bubble screen, this time to Tristan Smith, who caught three touchdown passes last week. Moves out across the 30 for a gain of five. Shepard is losing the leverage on the outside. Take a look at this. You've got two defenders there. Both are getting turned inside, and that allows Tristan Smith to get to the sideline. Those Shepard defenders need to fight to the outside shoulder, force that receiver back inside where you have help. Otherwise, Mines is going to span that play all day long. Second and five. Fake it again. Once again in the flat, Tristan Smith. And Shepard makes the tackle around the 25. Gain of three this time. Third down coming up. Rallying to the ball a little better here. Something else for Shepard. Anytime you're getting bubble screens like this, the action off of it is the stock block. You fake the bubble screen and then go. That is something, that's the shot play, the wrinkle off of this. Here soon, Mines has that in the playbook. But they break it out here on third and two. Man in motion is Johnston. It's Seaman straight ahead, punishing forward inside the 15. 
And the ball might have come out at the end. Clayton Batten has the ball for Shepard. The ruling on the field is the runner was down prior to the fumble. First down, Colorado School of the Mines. I'm not sure if we're going to tell by this angle, but this ball may have come out late because I think he's on top of Anilio Pena. As he's going to the ground, take a look right here. It's going to be hard. There's a lot of bodies in there, but that ball is the out. play of a ruling of a runner being down is under further review. And I think... If, Maybe we get another look at it from the side, but I think he's on top of Anilio Pena. The ball clearly comes out. This is really going to come down to, is there a clear, because it was called that he was down on the field. They're going to have to have a clear and obvious view. This should be a really good look at it. Taylor, it should be noted that replay is available starting in the semifinals. We have it today. It has not been available all year for these two teams. But instant replay is here, replay official on site. In fact, in the booth right next to ours here at Marv K Stadium. And so they can take a closer look. That knee right there. It looks like that right knee before the ball is coming out is down right there. Yeah. Well, that's bang, bang. All right, is that this ball is really difficult. loose? The, the trouble here again is if you're a Shepherd fan is that this was called that he was down on the field we'll get the call here after review the ruling of the runner being down stands and you need clear and conclusive evidence that's in the rule book the officials didn't see that it's an 18 yard run for and, Zeman and he said the call stands Right, not confirmed. Right. Confirmed would be, no, we had a clear look at this. He was down. Stands, there's a lot of bodies in there. We don't have a clear look at this, and it was called that he was down on the field. Mines retains the ball. You don't have enough to overturn it. So Mines in the red zone now. First down at the 13 of Shepard. First and 10 for the York Higgers at the 18. Matoka all alone in the gun. Quarterback draw. Matoka is swallowed up. Journey Dunbar, the sophomore defensive tackle, makes the play. Go empty, alert quarterback draw every time. And this is such a good job, individual effort by Journey Dunbar. Winning his one-on-one, -on -one, hits the spin move right inside. If Journey Dunbar doesn't make that play, that's a walk-in touchdown for John Matoka. Dunbar playing with that cast on his left hand. He gets that cast off next week. He's been playing with it for the last six games. Loss of five. Matoka flings it, end zone, incomplete, too much on it, intended for Karp. Keyshawn Haley had the coverage for Shepard, a first-team all-conference safety. Looked like Mason Karp maybe had a half step. Matoka's working left, coming back right, trying to hit that slot fade. Leaves it just a little bit too far inside. Long third down here. Mines needs 15. Or Diggers missed a field goal on their first possession. Trying to cash in here. Third down. Four-man rush. Matoka directing traffic, and he hits his man, Kenny Wright, the tight end, but short of the sticks. Inside the 10, it's fourth down. Gain of 11, fourth and four. And if you're Kenny Wright, got to know where you are on the field. This is a bust in coverage. Shepard turns Kenny Wright loose. He's standing by himself. Watch what John Matoka lets this go. There's nobody out there. You got to know where you are on the field. Catch that, get vertical, and that's a walk-in touchdown. Fourth and four, and Mines is going for it. Fifth in the nation, converting fourth downs this year. 20 of 27. And the offense remains out there, at least for the moment. Timeout, Mines. Hey, oh, John Matoka. Timeout. He wanted Colorado to go right there. Okay, give him some dap. Fourth down after this. A Colorado School of Mines is much more than the football pro program. Of course, they're the number one engineering program in the nation. But in athletics, they're a three-time national champion in men's cross country. Won the last title just a week ago. The women's cross country team finished third. They have been recognized as the top athletic department in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference 
each of the last six years. Brandon Moore in his first year as the head coach, and he decides to send on the field goal unit after all. Fourth and four, and a chip shot for Jacob Click, who missed from 44 on the first drive. This from 25. And Click knocks it through. Mine's on the board first in the Division II National Semifinal. Timeout on the field. Here at Colorado School of Mines, the semifinals in the Division II Championship. Marv K Stadium, the oldest football field in Division II and the oldest football field west of the Mississippi River. First game played here in 1893 in the foothills of the Rockies. Mines trying to make it to the national championship game for the first time in more than 100 years of their football history. Jacob Click kicks it away. And Shepard takes over at the 25. Taylor, Rams went three and out with Tyson Bajan, the NFL prospect at quarterback. A couple of first plays on that three and out. Pressure early, and we talked about how that was going to be a key for Mines. They've done this all season, lead the nation with 61 sacks. But it's not just the sacks. It's the opportunities to move the quarterback off his spot, and especially today for Tyson Bajan. That was the key for this defense. They only want time for one read for Bajan. Give him one opportunity and either take off and run or nothing else. Starting from the 25, Bajan through the hands of his receiver. Daryl Harper, the true freshman from Frederick, Maryland. Just a timing route out to the field. Daryl Harper looking back into the sun, but he'll be the first to tell you he's got to make that catch. Brown couldn't secure it on third down. First drive, Harper with a drop here. Bajan 0 for 3 to start. Give it to Ronnie Brown, breaking a tackle. And Brown picks up about four. Third and six coming up for Shepard. Last week against IUP, Ronnie Brown had a steady dose of carries in the first quarter. Really wasn't effective through the first quarter, but they stayed with it throughout the game, ending up putting together a pretty good performance for the game. But I think it's critical for this Shepard offense. They're going to continue to feed Ronnie Brown, even if these first and second down carries aren't getting the, the normal chunk plays that you're expected to see from Ronnie Brown. Third and six for the Rams. Kenny Edlin in motion. Mines brings the blitz. Underneath, it's caught for the first down. Brian Walker, Bajant's best friend and roommate, taking it out to the 48-yard line. Gain of 19. Big tight end split off to the left. Shallow cross concept, and Mines loses the big tight end in coverage. This is a good job by Tyson Bajant working through his progression. Still has somebody at his feet when he gets rid of this. Puts a catchable ball on Brian Walker, and the key there is the ability for yards after catch. It's the first year Walker has been the every down tight end for Shepard. He's put together a career year. Play action on first down and incomplete. Bajant wide of Daryl Harper this time. Jaden Williams walked down from the safety spot like he was blitzing. Ended up dropping into the flats. That's something you see a lot with this defense. Mac Minahan as well from the star position. He'll walk down like he's going to bring pressure. They use that a lot to get a flat defender into the boundary, add somebody in coverage, but they show it pre-snap like they're going to blitz him. Top of your picture, Marlon Cook returning from injury. He did not play in Shepard's first three playoff games. Here's Brown blasting ahead across the 45 of Mines, close to the first down marker. Gain of nine to set up third and short. Mines loves this five-man front with really only one linebacker there in the middle. Trouble with that is if you get past that first line of defense and past Adrian Marino, the linebacker, there's not a lot of help there. That's how you end up with an eight-yard run. They'd love to get Brown rolling Taylor to keep that Mines defense honest to prevent third and long. Here they've got third and one.
Brown again. And the door is closed. No room for Ronnie Brown. Loss of a yard. Adrian Moreno, Hayden, Greg, and Jack Peterson there for Mines. Looked like all the usual suspects on the defensive side. Look at all the blue jerseys rallying to the ball there. Force a big third down stop. Offense stays on the field here for Shepard. Not totally a surprise given where they are on the field and that this is still a fourth and manageable. Tyson Bajit looking back at the sideline with the arms up. What's the call here? It is a sellout crowd here at Mark K Stadium. 4,000 the capacity, making a lot of noise. Fourth and two. Bajan has punted twice this season, and he quick kicks it. Nobody back deep for Mines, and the ball bounces into the end zone for the touchback. So Mines takes over, up 3 0, and yes, the stadium is full. This is a charming place, Taylor. In Division two, the setting just about unmatched. Yeah, we got in here yesterday, got to do a full tour of the facility, see the surrounding areas, Golden, Colorado, and man, what a special place this is. And this the stadium, we talked about how long they've been playing football here, but they upgraded the facilities in 2015. It services the, the track and cross country program, a couple other programs, and really is, you use the word charming, I think it really is one of the, the better facilities in all the country, regardless of level. John Matoka has been on point so far. Starting this drive from the 20. It's Seaman who leans ahead for a couple. Covered up by Kyle Smith. For Mines, 12 of their 17 snaps have been in Shepard territory today. They've had great field position. This is by far their worst. Second and eight for the Diggers at the long 22. On second and eight, Atoka fires, caught. It's McLeod, and wrangled at the 28 to set up third and two. Dante Harrison there, McLeod thought there was some extracurricular activity, but no flag. You see late here, it's McLeod not appreciating getting thrown down by Dante Harrison. And maybe a little bit of a flop there. Yeah. But Max McLeod, these corners right now, they have so much respect for Josh Johnson and Max McLeod and their ability to go vertical. They're backed off right now, still allowing these quick hitches and slants that are picking up five and six yards. Third and two. Zeman lowers the shoulder, and he's got the first down. Gain of three when Mines needed two. And the drive continues. Pulling that right side of the offensive line around. Lead blocker there for Michael Zeman, and that's one of the critical pieces for 40 in blue. Captain, leader of this offensive unit, along with John Matoka, yards after contact, leaning forward for those extra yard or two every time. And oh, by the way, an academic All-American last year. His major, petroleum engineering. He's going to run this country one day. John Matoka keeping on the zone read. And Matoka gains four to the 35. This is just the new version of triple option. You can either hand it off, you pull it, and watch here, right there, he's raising that ball up to potentially flip it out on the bubble screen. That's the new version of the triple option. You're just reinventing it in the, the modern era. Really sound defense by Shepard to have all three options covered up. But that really tests the defense. Assignment football. Absolutely. Coaches drill that, but it's so tough. Play after play. Second and six. Flip it to Zeman in the flat. And Zeman with a little hop. Close to the 40. Third and two. There is a flag down. At least I thought there was. Looked like the official at the bottom had one, maybe fall out, picked back up, no penalty on the play. Shepard right now doing a good job. Feels like bend but don't break. They're giving up, not the chunk plays, but getting to these third and short. Opportunity here to get off the field. Nearing the final minute of the first quarter. Third and two. Jet sweep, the pop pass to Josh Johnston. He cannot turn the corner. There's the stop that Shepard was looking for. JT, Kwame Yao, and Journey Dunbar want you to watch the play. I want you to watch Journey Dunbar. Bottom of the screen, 90. Run down the line of scrimmage. 
That man is 310 pounds running down Josh Johnston. That's an incredible individual effort. We've already called his name a couple times. He blew up the quarterback draw earlier in the game. Journey Dunbar having a big game early in this first quarter. Coaches say that Dunbar showed flashes last year. He got in shape this year, and he's been on the field a lot more as a result. Click angling the punt. He handles all the kicking duties, and the officials will walk it up. Let's see where it crossed the sideline. At about the 30. So that's where Sheppard will start after the 33-yard punt. So Shepard takes over. Tyson Bajant, 159 career touchdown passes, passing the trick shot artist Alex Tanney at Division III Monmouth College last week. Most touchdown passes in NCAA football at all levels. But he's had a rough start today. Lacking the explosive plays right now. Really, we haven't seen them from either side, but especially for this Shepard offense. Move the ball up to the 32 now. But that's really going to have to try and manufacture those. Look how many bodies are close to the line of scrimmage. Safeties right now for Mines have their heels at seven yards. And Flax fly. Mines thinks it's against Shepard. Motion up front or offsides. Offside. Offside. Defense number 98 came into the neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Five yard penalty, still first down. It's on the nose guard, Peyton Rose. You mentioned the safety's heels at seven yards. That indicates a defense is not worried about you running by them and throwing over the top. They're saying, we're going to play man defense. We're going to have our safeties close to the line of scrimmage, have a lot of bodies near the line of scrimmage, and get after your quarterback. That's clear early in this game. That's the strategy for the Mines defense. So first and five. Bajan dumps it. Ronnie Brown, good pursuit by Mines. Not much there, gain of only a yard. Adrian Moreno, the junior from Bakersfield, California, with the tackle. One play due to helmet coming off. Left side of your screen, Brian Walker was in line and releases. Looked to me like Adrian Moreno likely needed to be blocked down on. He turned up field, let Adrian Moreno go. A good play in the open field by 15. That might have been the final play of the quarter, unless Bajan hurries things up here. And that'll do it. One quarter down in the semifinals in Division II, Colorado School of Mines up 3 0. It was 129 years ago the first football game was played here at Colorado School of Mines in Golden, carved out of a clay pit with an outhouse, yes, just beyond the sideline. You see that on the near side? And here's what Marv K Stadium looks like today. The oldest football field in Division II and the oldest football field west of the Mississippi. Mount Zion in the distance, rich history here at Marv K Stadium. Mines trying to advance to the national championship for the first time ever. They're up 3-0 as we start the second quarter. And on second down, Ronnie Brown. We're now talking about the former Auburn star. Shepard's running back, gains a yard to set up third down. This Mines defense has been outstanding so far. And look at the time of possession. In an eight-man box on that last play with safety Logan Rayburn walking down. Almost like an eight-and-a-half-man box. Shepard still trying to run into it. Going to have to figure out something on the outside quick, easy completions to get the pressure off of Mines and have them back off some. Third and three for the Rams. Shepard is one of three on third down so far. Rodney Dorsey, the motion man. Tyson Bajant, the senior ball invitee, floats it up top, and it's caught by the running back, Ronnie Brown. Across the 40 of Mines, he's out at the 37. A throw from Bajant right on cue, 24 yards. Here's what you come to expect from Tyson Bajant. This throw is special. They run the shallow cross as well in the middle. Release Ronnie Brown out on the wheel route. Not bad coverage, but especially with the defender barreling down on you, that's a perfect throw from Tyson Bajant. Bajant started two of six for 20 yards. Shepard punted on their first two possessions. That's the longest play of the day for the Rams. 
Page into the air again. The shovel at the last moment. It's Brown stepping out of one tackle, trying to keep his feet. And he's spun down at the 33 by Moreno. Gain of four. Such a good play here again by Tyson Page just to recover and get anything out of this. Zach Hester bending the edge off that left side. Number eight almost gets home for the sack. But credit again to Bajan, flipping it to his running back, Ronnie Brown, pick up something there, make that a positive instead of a sack. Second and six, fake the handoff. Bajan improvising. Bajan down the sideline. John Matoka is known as the scrambler in this game. Mines his quarterback. Bajent can use his wheels as well. He picks up a dozen. Bajent is a good athlete, and especially if you break contain. It's man defense, and there's just nobody open. It's good coverage on the back end. Mines up front, cannot lose contain. Looked like Jack Peterson there crashed down. Tyson Bajent able to escape to the right side, pick up the first down. First down at the Mines 21. Swing it, Rodney Dorsey, blockers in front. And Dorsey's cut down at the 15. Pick up of seven. Giving Mines a dose of their own medicine. Flip the bubble screen out. I think our uh, collision here has resulted in a couple connected helmets. Stoppage on the field, that's exactly what happened. Wow. Cam Forrest and Dorsey locking face masks. It's like the old Monday Night Football opener with the helmets colliding, colliding and exploding. And exploding. There's, Thankfully, and, they didn't explode. I mean, this stadium was built on top of an <laughs> old mining shaft. Thankfully, there was no explosion there. Seeing some of what makes Mines defense so difficult Nothing has been easy on this possession. Even the completions, there's been contact on Tyson Bajan, as you see here again, <laughs> as these, the helmets get stuck. Luckily, luckily able to separate Help. them quickly. Help, anybody. Second and four for Shepard. Finally, finding some rhythm on this drive. Brown, trying the left side. And close to the first down, gain of about three. Looks like it'll be third and a yard. Good patient running from Ronnie Brown. It's not set up initially. Cuts back to pick up a couple. Initially, this looked like this might be a tackle for loss, but Mines continuing to crowd the box. So third and one for Shepard. Agent to the perimeter. Alfonso Foray, and with the second effort, it looks like he's got the first down. Foray was dead to rights, and he created something out of nothing. Such a good play from Alfonso Foray. Cam Forrest triggers initially, and if Cam Forrest is able to make that tackle, this is a five yard loss. Instead, a huge pickup for a first down. Also Incredible individual effort from Alfonso Foray. Foray in his first year transfer from Lackawanna Junior College in Pennsylvania. Coaches say it's taken time with him, but he is picking it up. Now on the field a lot more. First and goal. Bajan over the middle and almost intercepted by Adrian Moreno. Moreno had both hands on it. Moreno did not bite at all. Watch the running back leak out. See Moreno pointing, he doesn't bite on that at all. He knows we've got help here. Somebody's gonna be coming from his right, our left. That's so good in the middle by number 15. Adrian Moreno just have to finish the play, come up with the interception. Agent's gotta see that, right? Absolutely, poor decision, but a really nice job by the linebacker, knowing his keys, realizing they've got help with the linebacker, stay home. Second and goal. To Cameron Dorner. Trying to cut it back, the defender hangs on. Logan Rayburn, the senior safety from Dallas. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Big stop to set up third and goal. Just like the missed tackle a minute ago from Cam Forrest. This time, if Logan Rayburn misses this tackle, it's probably a touchdown. Good job breaking down. 
big play there. Third and goal for Shepard. Against this tough, hard-nosed Mines defense. Can Shepard punch it in? Bajit scanning. Bajit has time. The pirouette. Bajit retreating some more. Back inside the 30. Extending the play. Tyson Bajit goes down. Nobody comes open. And it's fourth down for the Rams. This looks like Johnny Manziel. I can't think of too many players that have the escapability to stay alive for this long. Shepard's poor offensive linemen are they're all still hunched over, exhausted. And credit to mine secondary. That's a long time to stay in coverage and not give up somebody running scot-free wide open. That's a really nice job by the Mines defense. 30-yard field goal for Jacob Haney. And Shepard ties it up at three. So Ernie McCook's team does end up with points. And we are even in the semifinals of Division II. Shepard and Mines, two teams that fell in the national semifinals a year ago. One will break through today to meet Ferris State in the national championship game next week on ESPNU from McKinney, Texas. Here in Golden, Colorado, Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew. These are two of the top five teams in the nation in scoring, so of course we have a fist fight in a 3-3 game. These defenses are playing really well, sound football. You're not seeing really any busts, which we expected. I mean, these are not teams that they didn't get to this point in the season by having a lot of MAs and busts in the back end with coverage, but man, the effort is clearly there for both sides. The defense is showing out for both teams. MA meaning missed assignment. That is exactly right. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> On the return for Mines is Jack Lowry. And he takes it across the 30. How about Shepard's defense so far? I think this has been one of the bigger surprises to me. Mines last week running the football against Angelo State. That's a big reason why they're here today. And so far, winning up front. We've called Journey Dunbar's name a few times. He's been big for them really all over the field. You see Kyle Smith there again. Look at that play from Journey Dunbar running down the line of scrimmage. He's doing all that with a broken hand as well. Front seven for both of these teams, but really for Shepard as well, getting after the quarterback right now. John Matoka, finalist for the Harlan Hill Trophy, the Division II Heisman, swings it out. This has been the money play so far in the first half. That bubble screen, Max McLeod with the catch. And a gain of about four. That time a nice job by Dante Harrison, not allowing McLeod to get the edge, forcing back inside. You see the rest of the Shepard defense rallying to the football, make sure it's just a manageable pickup. That's clearly been how the Mines, how Mines is supplementing their run game, flipping the ball out, getting these bubble screens. They're fine with picking up three and four yards of pop right now. You know, surprised that Matoka is 11 of 13 through the air. Throwing it short again, but from the opposite hash mark all the way to the sideline, it's incomplete. McLeod was jockeying with Dante Harrison. So the winner of this one faces the defending national champions, the Ferris State Bulldogs from Big Rapids, Michigan. They knocked off West Florida 38-17 earlier. I thought it was special for both of these teams that they had a chance to win last week against teams that had beaten them earlier in the year. It's always hard to beat some, somebody twice, but I thought it was cool for both of these teams that that's how they advanced to the semifinals. Third and three, it was a catch by McLeod. Matoka flings it. It is caught for the first down. Josh Johnston brings it in for seven. Harrison and McDowell had the coverage for Shepard. Coverage is not bad on the back end. Walk, looking right down the barrel at this. Pretty good job by Josh Johnson finding his spot. Big target. Knows he's going to have contact. It's going to be a physical catch and a good job securing the catch for a first down. Matoka with the pump fake. Matoka unloads, looking for McLeod, is behind the defense. He's got it for the touchdown. A missile from Matoka. Mines on top. A 53-yard strike. It felt like 
everything to this point was setting up for this play. It's a double move. Look at that. Hitch and go. Max McLeod wins over top. And then this is just John Matoka putting a perfect ball on Max McLeod where only he can get it. The rest of it's just speed for Max McLeod. Adds to this record season. And Jacob Click adds the extra point. Offensive coordinator Pete Sturbeck says that John Matoka is the moon. He controls the tides for us. He is Mines' sun, moon, and stars this year. Mines up 10 to 3. Here in Golden, Colorado. And for Colorado School of Mines, a number of their alums, again, is the number one engineering program in the nation, are working on the project Artemis in conjunction with NASA and Lockheed Martin. How about this tweet today from Mines Football? This is a message in space from Callisto. Good luck to Mines Football. That is so cool. If they, if they win today, of course, they're playing for the Natty, as that message says. They're playing for the national championship. And John Matoka, Taylor, he might not be the NFL prospect that Shepard quarterback Tyson Bajan is, but he just unleashed a throw to Max McLeod for the touchdown. It's a perfect ball and set it going to break, but it really did feel like that entire first quarter was building to some sort of shot play. They were lulling them to sleep with bubble screens, quick slants, hitches, waiting on that over-the-top shot play, and that's exactly what it was. A hitch and go, got McLeod over top, and then again, a perfect throw from John Matoka. Kick is over the head of Ronnie Brown. It'll come out to the 25, back to the touchdown. And a nice job also by Matoka, starting out looking to his left or right, working back, making sure that the safety can't get over top. And I'm not sure, even if he had looked over there straight away, that it would have mattered because McLeod won by that much. Perfect throw as well, keep saying that, but that was a special touchdown for the Mines. McLeod with his 16th touchdown catch of the year. And now Tyson Bajan, who could become the first Division II quarterback to be an NFL draft pick since 1999. Chris Grison from Northwest Missouri State, taken by the Cardinals, back on the field, but a whistle. Timeout. Timeout. Colorado School of the Mines, their second charge timeout of the half. I hope Cameron McNee out with that Media one. Timeout. Colorado School of Mines. That's all it is. No extra the. Colorado School of Mines. They're up by a touchdown. 10 to 3 lead for Colorado School of Mines in the Division II semifinals here in Golden, the foothills of the Rockies. Well, Deion Sanders would love to turn Colorado into what Colorado School of Mines already is under Brandon Moore. That is a winner. Check out some of the prominent teams here in the state of Colorado. Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson, very limited this year with the Broncos. <laughs> CU, tough year. Colorado State, tough year. Air Force won nine games. And then there is Mines at 12 and two. Winners of 12 in a row. Taylor, they're up 10 to three. Tyson Bajan back on the field for Shepard. Started one of five in this game, six of seven since then. Found something late first quarter, first part of the second quarter. Bajan, the nation's leading passer, swings it. Daryl Harper makes a man miss. And Harper pulled down across the 30, a gain of six. Talking about leverage on the other side for the Shepard defense, Will Drogish corner look at him trigger and force the ball carrier back inside that is textbook from the cornerback position make sure the ball carrier has to go back inside where you have help coming do not let them get the corner it seems like there's always help coming always With minds just relentless effort on every single play second and four Brown finding an alley Ronnie Brown using his 4-4 speed Inside the 40 of Mines. Ronnie Brown finally dropped by Adrian Moreno after a gain of 32. And finally able to get the edge. A nice job from the left tackle spot by Chandler Brown, kicking out the defensive end. Not a lot of help left. And finally got a chance for Ronnie Brown. Everything bottled up in the interior to this point in the game. Off tackle, off Chandler Brown. First real chunk play we've seen 
of the do-everything running back. He really does have uncommon speed at this level. Coaches say he's been timed in the low 4-4s. Four First down. Brown gets a breather. Avon Holly, the sophomore from Maryland, up the gut for five. A little different taste here with Avon Holly, 6'1", 215 pounds. Big running back coming downhill. Announces his presence with authority. He runs right into Cameron Reller. Defensive tackle falls forward for another couple yards. Holly was an all-conference DB in high school. Made the switch to running back. And he remains out there on second and five. Bajan swings it. It is caught by Ryan Beach returning from injury. It's a gain of only a yard. Good to see Ryan Beach out there. We saw him go through warm-ups. Weren't sure if he would go today. But a big play. Good job rallying on the defensive side. By mindset of another third down. Good protection up front as well. A guy that we haven't really talked about yet, but Joey Fisher. We'll see him in some of the postseason bowl games as well. He likely has an NFL future. Two people on this offense, Tyson Bajant, Joey Fisher, names that you will hear again even after their collegiate careers. Third and three, Shepard is three of six on third down. Under five to play in the half. Mines brings the heat. Bajant hit, the ball is out, and it's scooped up by the ore diggers. Mac Minahan right there for Mines. It's a takeaway. Initially, this is a great job by Tyson Bajan. He makes Zach Hester miss. Look at the spin out right there. But now you've got to know the rest of the cavalry's coming. You can't set up your spot right there and try and get rid of this. If he's going to try and throw the football, it's going to have to be on the run. Credit, again, you said this earlier in the drive, that fanatical effort from Mines. Feels like there's always multiple blue jerseys around the ball carrier and the quarterback. Get home again and force the big turnover. And the player they call the Mad Hatter comes up with the fumble. Mac Minahan, John Matoka back to work for Mines. Matoka, pocket crumbling. Does get it away to Zeman, who cuts it back, breaks a tackle, and Zeman dives to midfield for the first down. What a play by Matoka and Zeman for 12. Absolute Houdini stuff in the middle of the field by John Matoka. There's a fake sprint out to his left. They're trying to throw a double move down to the boundary, but it's not there. Now this is all imp improvising by John Matoka. Gets it in the flat to Michael Zeman. Somehow turns out for a first down. John Matoka is listed at 5'11", 180, and that might be generous. And yet he is a magician back there for Mines. Zeman again. And Zeman, Zeman cannot break the tackle of Keyshawn Haley. It's a pickup of a yard. It's a good tackle by Keyshawn Haley. Haley doesn't make this play. Michael Zeman may score. Top of the screen. Look for a second there like Zeman may break that tackle. The transfer from Fairmont State, Keyshawn Haley. Good sure tackle. Matoka so accurate today. Now the sprint out. On second down, pass is caught by Zach Hoffman, his first grab. Donnell Howard there defending. Third and five coming up for Mines. Seeing some of the sprint out now for John Matoka. We asked offensive coordinator Pete Sturbick about that. Have confidence in him throwing to his right, throwing to his left. And he mentioned, look, the quarterback run game is a big deal for us with Matoka, but it's not on sprint out. We really use that as an opportunity to just move the spot for him because he's not the biggest guy like you mentioned a minute ago. Yeah, Brandon Moore said can be tough for him at times to see in the pocket. And he's so gifted on the move. Why not move the pocket here and there? Third and five. Matoka, the slant, incomplete. Tristan Smith cutting across, and Matoka just missed it. He knows it. Fourth down. He's upset with himself. This is an easy pitch and catch. They're just trying to throw a quick slant, get it to Tristan Smith. They go to a quarter, they go to bunch, 
And on the quarterback here, and he knows it as soon as it came out of his hand. Inaccurate throw, and it was set up. Would have been a sure first down if he could put it on the number for Tristan Smith. So the drive stalls. Jason Click out to punt. Sky high. Craters at the five and takes a favorable bounce. Mines has pinned Shepard inside the 10. It's a 37-yard punt. On the field, media timeout. Mines with the 10 to 3 lead. 2.30 remaining in the half in the national semifinals. Can you imagine that feeling? Tyson Bajan, a player who was not offered a scholarship by West Virginia, his home state, by Marshall, by James Madison, anybody in Division I, and yet he's going to the Senior Bowl. On first down, his pass is too tall for Rodney Dorsey. Second and 10 as Shepard is backed up deep here late in the half, trailing 10 to three. You saw some of the notable Division II players in the NFL right now. Austin Eckler, a superstar with the Chargers from D2 Western Colorado. There is a path there for Tyson Bajan. Absolutely, and the Senior Bowl invite, that video is so cool, and one of the things Jim Nagy talked about was how teams will look favorably on him. Looking in the portal, had some offers. Maryland wanted him, West Virginia wanted him, and he decides to come back. And I think it's just such a special story in this day and age of college football that he's here again. Bajan in trouble, trying to wrestle away from Jaden Healy, he cannot. A sack for Mines, the nation's leader in sacks. Loss of three. Sound like a broken record, but the coverage on the back end allowing pass rush getting home as well. Goodness, they turn Jaden Healy loose. His protection slid to the right, and that's too easy. The sophomore from Allen, Texas. Now third and 13 for Bajan. Line of scrimmage, the five. Got to be careful here with his heels at the goal line. Bajan from his end zone. And it's caught. A first down right at the marker. Marlon Cook, Shepard's leading receiver, comes up with it. Mines just rushes three, which is not typical for them. That's a tough throw. Working to your left, throwing back across your body. That's a lot of arm talent. That's an interest. That's a that spot was generous for Shepard. Cook did not play in the first three playoff games for Shepard. Thousand yard receiver. Now Brian Walker, the tight end. Shuffling out of bounds after a gain of about four. Going back to Bajan when he tested the portal. I loved when we talked to head coach Ernie McCook about that. He said, it was the worst 10 days of my coaching career. He said, I thought he was gone. I talked to him all the time. It felt like I was helping recruit one of my high school kids back in the day. And he decides he's going to come back. And what a special season this has been for Tyson Bage and Shepard. Yeah, in January, he had offers from West Virginia and Maryland. And he stayed at Shepard. Shocking Ernie McCook. Second and five. Bajan floats it incomplete. There was traffic there. Brian Walker had three four diggers around him. 107 to go in the half, third and five for the Rams. Jaden Healy coming off the sack. Backed up just a minute ago. Really nice coverage in the hip pocket of Brian Walker. Third and five. Shepard has all three timeouts. Mines with one remaining. Bajan, he is blown up. Fumble picked up for a touchdown. Logan Rayburn. The Mines defense putting its stamp on the semifinals. Another sack and another Bajan fumble. This one leading to a score. 61 sacks coming into this game, led all of college football. We talked about how critical it would be for this Mines defense to move Tyson Bajan off his spot, get after the quarterback. They said themselves, their key to the game, only allow him time for one read. There wasn't even enough time for one read on that play. Huge stop and score for the Mines defense. Click the extra point. 
Nolan Reeve just sent Tyson Bajan into another dimension. Guy that this staff used one word to describe him, relentless. Really solid edge rusher. And look who he beat on that right side, the All-American right tackle, Joey Fisher. That ought to tell you something about Nolan Reeves' ability to get after the quarterback. Right place, right time by Logan Rayburn with the scoop and score. Momentum squarely on this four digger sideline just a minute or so before half. Taylor circling back to that word relentless. It's a word that many of the ore diggers coaches used to describe a number of their players. Trip Thomas, the defensive coordinator, said when he got here a few years ago, he asked Brandon Moore, who was the defensive coordinator at the time, how do these kids play so hard? They, they just love the game, it seems like. Again, most of these kids are engineering majors, mechanical engineering, petroleum engineering. They say that football is like recess for Mines football players. These engineering majors are taking calculus three, they get on the field, and they can just run around like crazy. And that's why having a stat like 61 sacks coming into this point of the season, that has as much to do with effort as it does scheme. And they have both here at Mines. It's a well-coached team. We talked about how there aren't really any busts in the back end. But in order to get home to the quarterback, a lot of times that means you're having to win your one-on-one -on -one battle. And those battles come in the third and fourth quarter as well when you're tired. You watch Mines on tape. That fanatical effort is there for all four quarters against every opponent. Here's Brown on the return. And corkscrewed down at the 22. Brandon Moore in his first year as the head coach took over after Greg Brandon retired. Moore is at MadBacker56 on Twitter. I love that handle. It's how he played at OU his six years in the NFL with the 49ers and the Chargers. Won a national championship at Oklahoma in 2000. And trying to do the same as the head coach here at Mines this year. Two touchdown deficit for Shepard. Three timeouts in the back pocket. Under a minute to play. Almost intercepted. Mason Pierce had a beat on it. It is complete to Max Fisher, the NC State transfer. Out at the 30, gain of eight. Mason Fisher, even, or excuse me, Mason Pierce, even in off coverage, is keyed down on Tyson Badgett. Tyson Badgett, if you're going to work this boundary, throw the quick out, that's got to be a one step, get it out right now. Bajan lucky Mason Pierce didn't go the other way for another defensive touchdown. Pressure look here for Mines to see if they back out of it. On second and two, they do back out. Bajan still having to step up, and Bajan goes down. Jaden Williams, the safety. Mines comes at you in waves. It's a loss of six. They back out of it in the interior, but look on the left side of the screen. Timeout. That's where Jaden Williams comes Their from. They chew the up the back. This is the what we mean by timeout. that, the center is going to identify the Mike linebacker. Their offensive line is going to work that direction. Your running back is going to be responsible for somebody off the right side. They don't blitz. Now there's nobody left over. The quarterback is completely hot off that left side with Jaden Williams. He comes untouched for the sack. That is part of the problem that this Mines defense presents. They're going to give you pressure from all over the field and try and chew up your back to where they're staying in in protection. Even if they're not protecting the guy, you end up blitzing. It's, a, it's mind games for this Mines defense, and they get home again for another sack. I just have no idea where they're coming from. It happens all the time when you turn them on on tape. They're getting home, even in max protection. Teams this season have gone, leaving the back end, leave a tight end in seven-man protection, and Mines are still getting home with pressure. And this is another look here. Pay attention to the left side of the offensive line. That gap off the left side, you're going to get some sort of stunt. Just as you called, Shepard picks it up. Bajan up top, and the catch is made by Alfonso Foray. A first down at the 40, a gain of 16. Clock stops momentarily, 37 seconds. This is an elite throw and catch. Shepard, their second charge, timeout. Bajan has to navigate. Defender in the flat, that's Jaden Williams again. He's got to get it over one, but underneath two. And a good play by Alfonso Foray as well to come down with that. This is a big possession. Now that they've picked that up, if 
Shepard can get any sort of points here before half. That is huge for their momentum going into halftime. Well, I mentioned that Brandon Moore won a national championship as a player at Oklahoma in 2000. What a stellar defense that was. And what a linebacker room it was. Not just Moore, but Torrance Marshall, Rocky Kalmus, Teddy Lehman. We asked Moore this week, what do you remember the most about that team? He said the chemistry. Everyone was pulling in the same direction. There is Brandon Moore. He says that's what he has tried to bring to Mines in his first year as the head coach. On first down, Bajent looking for 4A double coverage and incomplete. Batted away. Will Drogosh was in coverage. It's good to see Drogosh pop back up. He's now he's back down on this sideline. There was a big collision. Joel Diaz coming over. And Drogosh is in a seated position, getting the attention on the sideline. Jackson Zimmerman, redshirt freshman, 29 in blue. Bottom of your picture has taken his place. And defense. Oh, the snap is through the hands of Bajent, and he crumples to the turf. Nolan Reeve, another sack for Mines. Starting to take its toll, this Mines pressure, even in ways that is uncharacteristic of Tyson Bajan to let one go through his hands like that. Time Just took out. his eyes off Colorado of it. Colorado School of the Mines. That's their final time out of the half. Six. The 32nd time out. Six first half sacks. 67 sacks on the season. That leads every division of college football from the FBS all the way down to Division game three. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 25 seconds. 25 seconds. There's defensive coordinator Trip Thomas. And he told us he wasn't bashful on the call. We're going to get after the quarterback. That's what they've done all year. It wasn't like this was some sort of surprise. They're going to get after the quarterback. Key, we have it circled in all of our notes. Only time for one read for Tyson Bajet. And I think so far in this first half, they have certainly executed on that goal. Thomas was elevated from defensive line coach to coordinator when Moore was promoted to head coach. Thomas, just five years ago, was the defensive coordinator at Mountain Home High School in Arkansas. It has been a quick rise for him, originally from Memphis. Well, they bring more pressure on third and 23. First, a flag near side of the field. False start. Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's on the left guard, Wyatt Pelicano. Would First. Assume here. First penalty of the day for Shepard. We assume here for Shepard, run the ball, run the clock out. Mines with no timeouts left. Get into half. They have the ball coming out of halftime. At their own 22 yard line. And on third and 28, they go conservative. Is it all that conservative when it's Ronnie Brown with a lane? And Brown does take it close to the 40, gain of 17, but well short of the first down. If you're Shepard, you'd hope that he would stay in bounds, run the rest of this clock out. Now you're going to have to go through your punt procedure. Nineteen seconds left, no timeouts. It's not really an opportunity, not enough time you would think for Mines to have any sort of opportunity to get points before half. It would not be surprised if Mines comes after this punt. Here's deep Ryan Barrett does get it away. Lands near the 30 and out of bounds with 13 seconds to go. Mines is out of timeouts. The 53 yard touchdown pass from John Matoka to Max McLeod. The strip sack. The fumble return for the touchdown by Logan Rayburn. Lines with the two touchdown lead here in the Division II semifinals. Punt travels 31 yards. First and 10, Colorado School of Mines. At your digger 30. And they give it to Michael Zeman. 
And Zeman powers ahead to the 40 on what should be the final play of the half. It's a gain of 10. This is a matchup of the top two passers in the nation with Matoka and Bajan. And Matoka wants one more play. He hurries to the line and spikes it with five seconds. It's like we're going to get. I'm not sure John Matoka can get into the end zone from here. We're going to get some sort of last ditch effort at points before half. Just might surprise you. He has surprised defenses all year long. Second down, and ten. The Final play of the half, most likely. Matoka stepping up over the middle. It is McLeod. A little bit of space at the 25 and twist. 35, beg your pardon, and twisted down at the 30. Mines is trying to make it to the Division II National Championship game for the first time the ever. The first half. Here at home in Golden, the ore diggers are halfway there. A 17 to three lead for Colorado School of Mines over the Shepherd Rams from West Virginia. Both Colorado School of Mines and Shepherd trying to scale the mountain that is Division II. Mines up 17 to three at the half as we welcome you back to Marv K Stadium here in Golden, along with former Rice quarterback Taylor McCarg. I'm Ted Emmerich. So yeah, all this talk coming in, two of the most prolific offenses in Division II, and it's Mines' defense that is standing tall so far. Yeah, just 13 points combined from these offenses right now. It's really been led by the Mines' defense that you mentioned, and Tyson Bajan, quarterback for Shepard, he has been on the run this entire game. We'll get the halftime highlights, and you're going to notice a theme here. This is one of the shot plays for Mines on offense. Outside of this, production for both offenses has not really been there. The storyline has been this Mines defense getting after the quarterback, rallying to the football. You can see a lot of Tyson Bajan getting sacked. Six first half sacks. This Mines defense on pace for a record setting performance. Another look, Jaden Williams getting in on the action. Feels like it's come from every direction. All the usual suspects for this Mines defense. Tyson Bajan going to have to figure out a way, get rid of the ball earlier, limit these fumbles. That one there wasn't a score. This one, another sack, took his eyes off the ball. That was sort of self-inflicted. This was the big one right before half. Pressure off the edge. Scoop and score from Logan Rayburn. As we take a look at the first half stats, really mirror each other. Not a ton of production by either offense. It's those two turnovers by Shepard, especially that scoop and score. That's been the difference in this first half. Six sacks for Mines in the first half, 67 on the year. Can they close it out in the second half? We'll find out next.
We were told at halftime it's the largest crowd in Colorado School of Mines history. More than 6,000 people on hand for the Division II semifinals, and the Ore Diggers have a two-touchdown lead over the Shepherd Rams from Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew, and Shepherd will have the ball to start the second half. Their last two drives ended in Tyson Bajan fumbles, one of which was returned by Logan Rayburn for a touchdown. Click sends away the line drive, and Shepard will have it from the 25. Taylor, what kind of adjustments does Shepard have to make? A couple things here. Ronnie Brown, running back for Shepard, is going to have to have a big second half. The other piece, get the ball out of Tyson Bajan's hands quickly. If that's going to be on your screen game, flip it out on the perimeter. We saw a little bit of that. That's one answer for it. The other piece, when you take your shot plays, leave your tight end in, leave Ronnie Brown in, set seven and even eight-man protections. You've got to keep Tyson Bajan upright. And oh, by the way, Ronnie Brown is going to have to run the ball effectively against this Mines defense if this Shepard team has any hopes of having a comeback in the second half. Tyson Bajan won the Harlan Hill Trophy last year, the Division II Heisman, a finalist for it again this year, trying to lead the rally in the second half. The drive starts with a Ronnie Brown run for two yards as Nolan Reeb makes the tackle. Brian Walker tied in a little slow getting up there. That first down run, we talked about how this Shepard team last week against IUP, they were committed to first and second down run. That's something Shepard needs to get back to, grind out these possessions, force minds to defend Ronnie Brown between the tackles. Now Shepard's longest play on first down today, just eight yards. They have been in this second and long and eventually third and long quite a bit today. Second and eight, Bajan unloads and it's caught for the first down. Daryl Harper across the 35, pickup of 11. Good to see the freshman Daryl Harper ran a similar route earlier, he had the drop. Nice job responding there, toe tap first down. Harper, the true freshman, Taylor, Marlon Cook, and Ryan Beach, Shepard's top two receivers, are available today. Both have made catches in the first half, but we haven't seen a ton of them. It's clear that they're limiting their reps review, coming back from injury. The ball, the -yard line. So line it up at the 38. Bajan has had to distribute to many different receivers in the playoffs because of those injuries to Cook and Beach. First down, four-man rush. Bajan, clean pocket, and hits Brian Walker, the tight end, for three yards. Clean pocket protection on this first drive. It doesn't look like much, it's just a three-yard pickup. But look at the clean pocket up front. That's improvement from this Shepard offensive line. Shepard coaches told us this week, going up against that Mines defense that leads the nation in sacks, can we match their intensity? Their sacks are a result of effort every single play. Second and seven, Brown picks up a couple. It'll be third and five for Shepard. Wyatt Pelicano left guard, pull him around and let Ronnie Brown get up behind him, pick up a couple, but now a third and medium. Not in a spot on the field. I don't think it's time to hit the panic button yet. Still a lot of game left. If they don't pick up something here for Shepard, I think you probably see them punt. I don't think this is four down territory yet for Shepard. Mines has collected six sacks so far. Playoff record is 10 in Division II. On third down, it's a drop through the hands of Harper. It would have been a tough catch. Harper was prone, but he had his hands on it. Instead, it's fourth down. I think he just fell down. It's a simple curl route to the field. Tyson Bajan gets this ball out. Watch this is coming right into your screen. Looked like maybe Tyson Bajan pulling him a little too far to the outside, but I thought Daryl Harper clearly had an opportunity to catch that for a first down. On fourth and five, Ryan Barrick to punt it. And he angles it out of bounds near the 30. Official walks it up past the 30, and Mines will start at the 35. Just a 22-yard punt 
It is a record crowd on hand here at Marv K Stadium. Truly a gem in the foothills of the Rockies. More than 6,000 people here. The capacity, Taylor, is 4,000. They fit a few more in here. Uh, they've packed the stands completely also to this west end zone where the soccer field is as well. Huge crowd tailgating there as well. You get a, a look at it right there. The tailgating scene was rocking four hours before kick. It's been an awesome atmosphere here in Golden today. Bubble screen on first down. They worked this play quite a bit in the first half. Max McLeod, leading receiver so far, gains five. Shepard defense calling for a crackback block there. Does not look like they're going to get it back to the bubble screens, which was something this Mines offense featured for that entire first half. And they can pick up four yards, five yards, six yards at a time. It's like an extended handoff. Now here's the actual handoff to the battering ram, Michael Zeman. He picks up four. Watch Josh Johnston right there working back on that crackback blindside block. That should have been a penalty. Yeah. For all of the history of, of football, that would be a clean hit. The rule was changed recently yes. per the letter of the law. That should have been a penalty, and it was missed. Third and one. Give it to Michael Zeman. Sure thing. First down, gain of five. It is so hard to stop Michael Zeman when he's coming straight downhill at you. Well, that's exactly how Mines wants to feature him. It's not a guy that they get out on the edge a lot. He's going to run right at you. Look, this is downhill. This is an A-gap run play. And then if it's not there, work the cutback lane. That's the secondary read. He does such a nice job of it. And oh, by the way, he's not afraid of contact. First down, give it to Zeman again, through an alley. Michael Zeman still churning to the 35-yard line. A pickup of 16 for Zeman. You're starting to see this offensive line lean on Shepard's defensive line, winning at the point of attack. Watch here again. This is six, seven, eight yards past the initial contact. Fake it to Zeman this time. Matoka on the edge. And Matoka is taken down after a pickup of five by Kevin Kowser. This is a good job, a good effort by Kevin Kowser. He crashes down, recovers to come make a play. This is a big possession for Shepard. If they can figure out a way to get off the field here, get momentum back on their sideline. If this turns into a three-score game, all of a sudden you start worrying about, does Shepard have enough in the tank to mount any sort of comeback with the way that Mines defense has been playing today? Again, and weaving his way inside the 30 to set up third and short once more for Mines. Now you're seeing the Mines play calling with offensive coordinator Pete Sturbeck. This is what he talked about on our coach's call this week. We want to try and limit possessions for Shepard. Grinding the clock right now on this possession. Just one pass with five rushes, clearly trying to establish the run game, chew up clock. Third and two. Zeman time yet again. Landon Walker, a wing on the right, another running back. Fake it to Zeman. Matoka up top. McLeod, his second touchdown. You hammer away with the run game, and you go over the top for six. 27 yards. They do it again. It's just a two-man route concept, just like Max McLeod's first touchdown. Instead, this time it's not a stop and go. This is just a go route. This is winning on the outside. He runs right by Dante Harrison, and another perfect throw from John Matoka stretches this to a three-score lead. Click with the extra point. Get those votes in for the Harlan Hill Trophy. John Matoka, one of the nine finalists for the Division II Heisman. His second touchdown pass, both to McLeod. Mines up by three scores. It is now a three touchdown lead at home for Colorado School of Mines in the national semifinals. John Matoka, has been money today. A couple of touchdown passes to Max McLeod. He's one of nine finalists for the Harlan Hill Trophy, the Division II Heisman. 
Tyson Bajan, his counterpart today, Shepard's quarterback, also a finalist. Bajan won the award last year. Matoka would certainly be deserving. We'll find out Friday, the day before the national championship next week. Clearly playing well enough, you would think, to warrant the award today. They've taken their shots at the right opportunities, and they've capitalized. That's been the key for Mines today. No turnovers to this point in the game. They've grinded things out on the ground. A lot of quick underneath routes, concepts. And then when they've taken the shot plays, they've converted. A turnover margin critical for both teams. Mines with the two fumbles, the strip sacks of Tyson Bajant. Mines is plus 18 on the year in turnover margin. Which is unbelievable. When you think about that and you really unpack that, that is so difficult to be that heavy in the turnover margin in the positive direction. Just speaks to this defense and their ability to get after the quarterback, create turnovers, and then on the other side, really sound offensive football, not giving the defense the football. Well, we know about TB12. Tyson Bage and TB2, he's got to mount something here, down by three touchdowns. Plenty of time. Dump it, Ronnie Brown. And he waltzes out across the 30-yard line. Nice gain on first down. Give him six. Still plenty of time in this game, but the drives that we've seen, it's happened since the opening drive of the game for Shepard. As you see, again, pressure right up the middle. Good job by Bage and finding his check down. But for this Shepard offense staying ahead of the sticks. This is important right here. Second and four, getting to second and third and manageable is critical for this offense. Second and four, it's Brown with the handoff this time, and Brown finds no daylight. Kyle Bonson, the big nose guard, senior from Greeley, Colorado. Coaches say he doesn't get nearly enough credit. He drops him for a loss of two. And he didn't make the play but he blew it up initially. Peyton Rose right in the middle. He's not gonna get credit for the tackle, but that's what slowed this play down and allowed everybody else to rally to the ball. So after the nice gain on first down, negative play on second down, third and six. That's what we're talking about, having to try and stay ahead of the sticks instead of those negative plays in the middle of drives. Four-man rush. Bajant uncorks, and it is intercepted. Mason Pierce with his fifth pick of the year. Pierce breaks a tackle inside the 35, and he's twisted down. Mason Pierce is a ball magnet. It's the third turnover of the game for Tyson Bajant. One of the captains for this Mines defense. This is really just forced by Bajant. Mason Pierce is in a good spot, trying to throw the corner out to Max Fisher. But that is QB 101. When you see the corner dropping underneath the corner route, you've got to find a check down or get rid of it. I understand you're trying to make something happen. You've been frustrated all game. But your primary read there is the corner, and Mason Pierce is right there. And then credit to him, make the play, picks up 20-plus yards on the return. Mine's offense rolling again. And with the takeaway, they start at the Shepard 33. Matoka fakes the swing pass. Oh, Matoka stays on his feet somehow, lets it fly to an open Josh Johnston for a touchdown. John Matoka is magical. 33 yards. Go ahead and flex, John Matoka. And strike up the band. We're running out of ways to describe how special John Matoka is. It's another double move. He has to stay patient in the pocket. He doesn't feel pressure from his backside, and it doesn't matter. This should have been a sack. He recognizes it at the last second, gets rid of it somehow. An unbelievable individual effort again from John Matoka. When I drove to the stadium today, I saw John Matoka in sweatpants and a sweatshirt. He looked like any other guy on campus. He is not any other guy on the field in the Division II semifinals. Somehow, some way to Josh Johnston for the score.
John Matoka, computer science major and star quarterback for Colorado School of Mines. His third touchdown makes it a 31-3 lead for the Ore Diggers. The play is never over, Taylor, with John Matoka. Kyle Smith from Shepard had John Matoka dead to rights. And this is some old Roger Staubach, eyes in the back of your head stuff. It's unbelievable, number one, that he avoided the sack, but to convert that to a touchdown, I mean, that speaks to how special Matoka is. Here's Brown on the return, can't even make it to the 15. Back to that touchdown. Watch off the right side, number 11, Kyle Smith. He has Matoka dead to rights. Spins out of it, knows he's going to take a shot. There's a bust in the back end. Josh Johnston is wide open. But again, just for Matoka to even get rid of the ball here, forget scoring a touchdown. And how did Josh Johnston get loose? It's the double move. They're selling the screen. Josh Johnson stock blocking like he's just blocking in the flat, turn it loose, but what else can you say about John Matoka? Tyson Bajan gets his best friend Brian Walker underneath, takes it across the 15. Paul Edmonds makes the tackle, gain of five. Last five drives for the Rams. Fumble, fumble, punt, punt, interception. Frustration clearly mounting for Shepard. We've said it, another second manageable here. What's really killed them is second down and third down negative plays. Second and five. Oh, Bajan lost the handle on the snap for the second time. And he's just got to cover it up. Another negative play on second down. And this is self-inflicted. It's a bad snap. Bajan should be able to recover this. Go from second and medium to third and long again. It feels like that's been the story all game for this Shepard offense. Now you're in a passing down. Mines again pin their ears back and come after you with one of these exotic blitzes. Third and long, you're getting man defense in a crowded box. Shepard started three of five on third down, two of their last eight. Oh, Bajan pirouetting into pressure, got a double back, lets it go, incomplete. Flag is down. Near side at the 20-yard line, away from the play. Cameron McNee, the referee from the Lone Star Conference. Holding, defense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. It's a dramatic pause, too. We got no initial indication. It's a first down for Shepard. It's a long time to get that called. The foul was on number 29 came from the boundary the group we're looking at here was off to the yeah. field single man route down to the bottom called against Jackson Zimmerman the redshirt freshman from Highlands Ranch so first down for Shepard six and a half to play in the third quarter down by 28 in the semifinals winner plays Ferris State next week in McKinney Texas Bajan, deep shot, almost a one-handed grab by Rodney Dorsey. The transfer from Towson. Now in his fourth year in the Shepard program, second and ten. Colin Romero in perfect coverage. He's in a great spot here. Only way there's a completion here would be Rodney Dorsey going up and making a circus catch. Really good coverage by Colin Romero. Romero, the junior from Castle Pines, about 40 miles south of here in Golden. You almost feel like that Bajan is going to have to hit one of those deep shots. Give Shepard some life. Drops it off. Oh, a flat drop by Kenny Edlin. 
the freshman. Mac Minahan in coverage. For all the struggles Shepard's had on offense, cannot have drops. Just have not been able to get out of first gear all day today on offense. Anytime there's been anything positive, feels like one step forward, two steps back. Another third and long. Now listen, Tyson Bajan is responsible for three turnovers. He's not getting much help right now. Rams five of 13 on third down. Bajan floats it, flag down. Well over the head of Cameron Dorner. Zimmerman had the assignment for Mines. And Jackson Zimmerman, he's upset, but this is absolutely pass interference. The sideline is calling that this should be uncatchable. Right. Jackson Zimmerman got physical right off the bat and didn't relent well down the field. 10, 15 yards down the field, he still has hands on the receiver. Pass interference, defense, number 39. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's 29. 29. Not 39. Nothing. Right. We got you, Cameron. We got you. Don't worry. But yes, it's on Zimmerman. Not Bottom of the screen, right here, gets physical, has his hands on the receiver well down the field. Look, the ball probably is uncatchable. The sideline doesn't have a bad point, but you cannot be that physical 10 yards down the field. Yeah, it's uncatchable because Zimmerman because held him up. On the ground. So another first down by penalty for Shepard. Brown on the sweep. Oh, he got drilled. Paul Edmonds, the red shirt freshman, just ran over Ronnie Brown. Loss of three. Feels like everybody on this Mines defense is getting their turn. Hall Edmonds, normally the third string linebacker. Brock Ewing is hurt, getting a chance to play in relief of Adrian Marino. And man, look at that, right in the middle. What a play from Hall Edmonds. That's going to be fun in film session tomorrow. No doubt. Second and 12. Bajit hangs in, dumps it to Walker, and Walker makes it past the first stick. Across the 40 to the 42. Shepard here in the second half, a total of 26 yards and 25 penalty yards on Mines, leading to a couple of first downs. Feels like they've had the ball the majority of this third quarter, but they've been on their side of the field. It feels like nothing is coming easy for them right now. Really, the only positive movement on this drive have been both of the penalties. Third and seven for Shepard. Just a three-man rush. Bajant rifles it. It's picked off. Jaden Williams, his fourth interception of the season and the ninth of his career. A flood of takeaways for the Mines defense. You can see Tyson Bajant and Cameron Dorner talking to one another. Looked like there was a miscommunication with Dorner. Bajan thought he was going to continue his route. Dorner set it down. Look right in the middle of your screen. Dorner's going to come from right to left and sets it down right there. Bajan thought he was going to continue working to his left. And credit to Jaden Williams. Right place, right time to come up with the interception. First down for Mines at their own 44. Matoka pitches it out to Josh Johnston. And it's a first down for Mines in Shepard territory to the 41, gain of 15 yards. A 31-3 lead at home in the national semifinals. Oh, all the good vibes now for the Ore Diggers. And Jaden Williams gets the turnover hat. Matoka on the sprint out. Connects with Mason Karp who is slung down after a gain of four by Anilio Pena. That hat has to be Space Cowboy, surely. Stars on it, cowboy hat. Yeah, how many? I have no way to confirm this, but yeah. mine, mine You're going to name it that. Yeah, if it's not, <laughs> correct me. You're going to hear about it on Twitter here in a second. Second and six for the Ordinary. But yes, think of all the Mines alums that work at NASA. 
Second and six. Max McLeod with a screen. And dives to the 32, yard short of the first down. Third and one, the 10th catch of the day for Max McLeod. See the big boys come in here, Cole Johnson, Landon Walker, short yardage. All game, the quick screens out on the edge. Mines have been effective, picking up five, six yards of pop. And that has allowed them, we talk about Shepard not being able to get on the right side of the sticks. Feels like any time there's been a third down for Mines, it's been third and one. And they give it to Zeman, the bowling ball, who has the first down across the 30. Keyshawn Haley tasked with trying to bring him down. Drive rolls on, three minutes to play in the third quarter. Now Zeman, a local product from Wheat Ridge, Colorado, 10 miles east of here. Matoka, the quarterback from Texas, almost half the team is from Texas. We asked Brandon Moore, well, how is that? He says, well, Think NASA, think oil and gas. Texas is an engineer's paradise. We know where to recruit. First down and play action for Matoka. The Texan winds up, looking for Johnston incomplete. Donnell Howard was in coverage for Shepard. No flag. Recipe all game for Mines. We've talked about it. Run the ball effectively. Quick game out on the perimeter. And when they take shot plays, a downfield passing play, they do it with a two-man route concept. It's only been Josh Johnston and Max McLeod. They leave everybody in to block and protect for John Matoka. That's the first one today that's been incomplete. That ends seven straight completions wow. as well for John Matoka. Again, such a rich history here at Mines. Mentioned the engineering program that is top-notch in the U.S. Swing it to Zach Hoffman, and he's got the first down to the 18-yard line. 11-yard pickup, man down. For Shepard is Nathan Muley, the defensive tackle. We'll step aside. Timeout on the field for injury. Media timeout. Colorado School of Mines is a quarter plus away from joining the top seed, Ferris State, the defending champion in Division II in this year's national championship game. Next Saturday, 1 Eastern on ESPNU from McKinney, Texas, just north of Dallas. It's a 31-3 lead for Mines. Nathan Muley, the defensive tackle of Shepard, helped off the field. And how about that? Mines player helping him off as well. So Mines in the red zone here late in the third quarter. First down at the 18. John Matoka, finalist for the Harlan Hill Trophy, the D2 Heisman. Three touchdown passes today. Feed it to Michael Zeman. And he's twisted down at the 15 by Malik Holloway. Pickup of four. We are fascinated by this turnover. Miner's hat that the ore diggers place on the head of whoever comes up with a takeaway on defense. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, everyone has the turnover if it's prop, not right? A space this is cool. Hat, well, it should be. Cowboy up in space. Minute and a half left. Seaman trying to break a tackle and walled up. No gain. Kyle Smith standing his ground. I haven't mentioned Smith's name all that much. One of the best players in Division II. Top 10 in the nation in sacks. But Mines has done a nice job neutralizing him so far. Fifth year senior. Already has his master's degree. You're right. Haven't had a chance to call his name all that often. Had a chance at the sack earlier. One of the plays of the game from John Matoka. Third and long. This is the ninth play of the drive. Under a minute to go in the third. Matoka rifles it. That is caught. Max McLeod, his third touchdown. A BB from Matoka. 19 yards, and the Or Diggers pad the lead. 18th touchdown grab of the season for Max McLeod. working right over the middle of the field. You called it a BB, that's exactly right. John Matoka puts everything he has on this, fires it in there. 
The route continues for Mines. Yeah, remember when this was a 3-3 game in the first half? Certainly not what we expected, even coming out of half. Thought Shepard had the ball. They drive down, make this a one-score game, but Mines came out of half, led by that defense as they have been all game and all season. Look at that guy. I don't have a vote for the Harlan Hill Trophy. Probably would go to him if I did. The hair is just immaculate, and the vibes are too for John Matoka and Mines, and for Max McLeod for that matter. This is the fourth straight game a Mines receiver has three touchdown receptions. McLeod did it against Colorado State Pueblo in the first round. Josh Johnston did it in the second round. Tristan Smith did it in the regional final last week against Angelo State, and McLeod does it again today. McLeod with 165 yards receiving. Shepard on offense, total 173 yards. Ouch. Again, you're talking about a Shepard offense that's number two in the nation in total yards. Here's Brown on the return from inside the five. Finding a lane across the 30. Ronnie Brown beats the kicker. Brown breaks another tackle. And he's out of bounds inside the 35. Ronnie Brown getting loose. Top running back and also a top return man. Earlier in the game, almost busted one as well. Finally get Ronnie Brown loose, set up well. Kicker to beat. He is a weapon. They have not had a, figured out a way to get him going today in the run game, but you talked about his speed, low four fours. He's a dynamic back. A 66-yard return by Brown. And Shepard has the first down at the Mines 32. Avon Holly is upended after a gain of one. Well, Tyson Bajan, it's not like it was smooth sailing in the first half, but here in the second half, two picks. So two fumbles that he lost in the first half, Taylor, and two interceptions here in the second. And you knew that they were going to have to start taking some shots in the second half. I think some of these are just forced by Tyson Bajan, trying to get his team, will his team back into the game. And this Mines defense just too good on the other side, and they've capitalized. Final play of the third quarter. Bajan down the seam. It's caught by Dorsey. And Rodney Dorsey's inside the 10. First and goal for Shepard when we start the fourth quarter. Pick up a 15 yards. Shepard on the doorstep. They'll be looking for their first touchdown of the day. Mines in control. That's the end of the third quarter. Oh, it's one of the great mascots in sports. Blaster the Burrow here at Colorado School of Mines. The Ore Diggers up 38 to three over Shepard in the Division II semifinals. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCart with you here in Golden, Colorado. Sad thing is, Blaster would usually run the length of the field after Mines touchdowns. Because this is an NCAA championships event, he is not allowed to do that. Live mascots, they don't allow that. So we've been denied that. But Mines still up 38 to three. Here's Ronnie Brown on first and goal for Shepard getting pushed back. Probably thankful he wasn't called into duty today. <laughs> Be getting a workout, right? Well, Blaster is a racing burrow. He's in good shape. There's a flag down after that run by Brown. Can you tell if this is unnecessary roughness on mines? It's maybe on Ronnie Brown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 30 of the offense. You nailed it. 15 yard penalty. The down will count, will be second down. Wow. Ronnie Brown thought he was slammed down late. Maybe it was a, a little bit late. That is number 30's first unsportsmanlike conduct towards an ejection. See at the end of the run, Nolan Reeve, excuse me, Hayden Gregg. Yep. And there's a little bit of a conversation here. Mm. Whatever was said there. Yep. To Cameron McNay, the referee. The pleasantries. Yep.
So that run stands. Mark off the penalty yardage, second and goal from the 21. Bajan uncorks it for Harper, cannot make the diving catch. Behind Mason Pierce, third and goal. And so impressed with Mason Pierce today. Fifth year senior from Bolverde, Texas. Left side of your screen, matched up against Daryl Harper, the freshman. He's just in a good spot. Ball is not great from Tyson Badgett. It's really just good coverage. It's been that way all day from Mason Pierce. Coaches say that Pierce walks around like a pit bull, chest out, always flexing. He's 5'10", yet he feels like he's 6'5 at corner. Third and goal, Bajan is wrestled down again. Zach Hester with the sack this time. Sack number seven for the Ore Diggers. Another look at it, Zach Hester. Relentless effort. How many times we use that word to describe this defense? Zach Hester was the guy out of a team full of people that you would describe as pretty smart. It was just, this is the guy that they said was the smartest yes. on defense, which is quite the honor. Brandon Moore, head coach, that's how timeout. he described him. Shepard, their first charge timeout of the half. Timeout for the Rams. Yeah, Zach Hester, geological engineering major. Media. You're a timeout. rice grad. Can you top that? <laughs> Everyone's taking their picture either with Blaster the Burrow, just of Blaster. The only mascot featuring an explosive in the NCAA. Yes, that's a stick of dynamite in its mouth. 43-yard attempt for Jacob Haney. And his second field goal of the day, 38 to 6. So how does a Burrow become a college mascot? Well, Golden, Colorado, long time mining town. It is Colorado School of Mines, after all. Mine superfan Heine Foss would walk his Burrow to football games in the 1930s, just right down the street, up to old the old football field before it was renovated and became Marv K Stadium. And they just decided, why not make the Burrow our mascot? And sure enough, here he is. Plaster the Burrow. It really has been first time for me visiting Colorado School of Mines. It's been an awesome atmosphere. Everybody here has been incredible, welcoming, and uh, it's a special place. You can see why school and its fan base and alumni, they take a lot of pride in this program. You could have come here. This was your first offer, right? It was my first offer, and my dad couldn't believe it. He was like, you can't get in there. <laughs> he thought it was a mistake. I showed him. I ended up at Rice, just like you mentioned. Yeah. Although I was a sports <laughs> management major. I had some help getting in. You needed no help. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. You, you were an all-star in the classroom and on the field. Won more games than any other quarterback in Rice history. And he kicks away. And a fair catch. So, John Matoka, a day to remember, Taylor. They picked their spots all game, and when they decided to take shot plays, they converted. And John Matoka, over the top, has been so special today. These are two of the touchdowns. See another one there to Max McLeod. Max McLeod on the double move earlier than just a go ball there. This is the one that was, you see the fastball over the middle to Max McLeod for his third score of the game. The touchdown with Kyle Smith barreling down on him when he got out of that was one of the more unbelievable scores we've seen all season. Matoka has accounted for 54 touchdowns on the year. Oh, see him on the sidestep. Nice moves from the big running back out across the 30-yard line. Mines in the second half, scoring touchdowns on all three of their drives so far. Remember, this was a 3-3 game early in the second quarter, and Mines ripped off 38 unanswered. Yeah, Zeman there, he's been bulldozing people, decides to hit the juke button. Little R trigger. R trigger. Second and three. Zeman again plowing ahead and another first down 
for the Ore Diggers. Seven more yards for Zeman. Keyshawn Haley wrapped him up. That's more like it. Have a dose right in the middle. Take a shot, fall forward, first down. His sister McKenzie, an All-American in track and field here at Mines in the distance medley relay. She's the best runner in the family. And yet Michael Zeman, an All-American running back himself. Very good running back. I'm not sure he's built for distance running no, per se. No. But a very, very good running back. Fake the handoff to Chris Yu again. And Matoka, the deep shot. McLeod inside the 20. It's worked all game long for Mines. McLeod burned Donnell Howard for 49. Stop me if you've heard this before. Two man route concept, max protection. He fakes like he's running a slant there. And I think that's why Clayton Batten, the corner, Thinks he's got help. Then Max McLeod turns that vertical. Another shot play. John Matoka, if he put that out there a little bit more, I think that's another touchdown. That was a little bit underthrown. McLeod up to 214 yards receiving. Chris Yu with his first carry of the game, the sophomore from Colorado Springs. Yu's from the yes. crowd. More than 6,000 on hand. And Blaster the Borough as well. A record crowd for Colorado School of Mines as they move closer and closer as the clock melts away to their first appearance in the national championship game. Zeman is back in. Fake the handoff to him. Matoka, oh, too tall. Even for Josh Johnston, who stands 6'2. Third down. Now the capacity here at Marv K Stadium listed at 4,000. 6,191 turning out. A record here at Mines. Talked about it earlier. I was so impressed with the tailgating scene. Just over where you see this. Our group standing right behind the end zone. Up above that, some parking up there where they've got all the, the grills set up. They were out there four hours before kick getting it going. Third and nine. Matoka stepping up. Matoka throws at the last moment. It's caught in the end zone for the touchdown. Mason Karp, 14 yards. Matoka's fifth touchdown pass of the day. Toka improvising again. I can't believe he stayed behind the line of scrimmage. I thought for sure he had gotten past the line of scrimmage. But the side judge to that side of the field, he was all over it. Another special play from John Matoka. This handling of the snap and Click's kick had no chance. Matthew White couldn't get it down. Try Johnny football Time version 2.0. John Matoka, five touchdown passes. The Ore Diggers coming today at home in the semifinals. Time of year at ESPN here. We always partner with the V Foundation to highlight the need for cancer research that helps save lives, and you can join the fight. V.org slash donate. Remember, 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Yes, times are tough. If you are considering any end of year giving, V.org slash donate. Every single dollar goes to cancer research. This is the Division II National Semifinals in Golden, Colorado. Just a Gorgeous day. Not so much for Shepard out of West Virginia. A 44 to 6 lead for Colorado School of Mines. 11-24 remaining as Mines will look to advance to their first ever national championship game in football to play the defending champ, Ferris State. You know, I mentioned the record-setting crowd as Shepard calls for the fair catch. 6,000 plus on hand, Taylor. 
another part of this, the students have turned out. We were told finals started this week. There are finals on the schedule today on a Saturday. In fact, heard from one student as we were at walkthrough yesterday. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to the game. I've got a final in the afternoon. That's how special this place is. And these players are going through this as well. Now, yes. there's obviously are being moved. They didn't have to take part if they had one scheduled today. Right. But this place, it's the number one engineering school in the country. And finals are not getting moved. Doesn't matter if no. it's the latest game they've ever played at home in school history. You're, still, you're going to be there for finals. <laughs> they've never had to account for a team that plays in mid-December. Here's Ronnie Brown shooting through the hole. Ronnie Brown is unleashed. 4-4 four, four speed. Ronnie Brown to the end zone. 75 yards for the touchdown. And Shepard could have used that much earlier. Special, special player. And Mines have kept him bottled up most of the day. Really, his biggest play came in the return game. Give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. You see that speed there late. Gives a little bit of Deshaun Jackson trace the yep. goal line there at the end, which I don't think Mines fans were thrilled with. But look, it hasn't gone the way that Shepard has hoped. But what a special season it has been. And it's been led all year by that guy right there and Tyson Bajan. Ronnie Brown now with more than 1,800 yards on the ground. His 19th touchdown run. And it's 44 to 13. Ended up being Shepard's longest gain on a first down play today. 75 yards, Ronnie Brown. It's been such a special week for Colorado School of Mines. The Ore Diggers hosting a national semifinal. Think about that. They, they've matched their deepest run in school history, made it to the semis last year and lost. They're about to go one step further to the national championship game for the first time ever. 44-13 the score here in the fourth quarter. Even after the Ronnie Brown 75-yard touchdown run for Shepard, Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew. Number 34, Brandon Jacob Moore, Mines' head off. coach, said the national championship has Number been the goal Walmart. on the board for Jack six Lowry. years now since he has been on staff, now in his first year as the head coach. And they had set up the winning culture, and he'd been on staff like you mentioned, but his takes over as head coach in his first two games for this team, they drop. Take a look at this Ore Diggers defense. They got after the quarterback early and often, and that sound top-down team defense, it was there through the first half, really came alive in the second half. A couple of these turnovers, quarterback pressure, relentless effort, and it's been from everybody. It feels like we've called everybody's name on that defense. As you see right there in the middle, Hall Edmonds getting some as well. Jalen, Jaden Williams, Cameron Reller, Zach Hester, Mac Minahan, Adrian Marino. It's been everybody on this defense, led by defensive coordinator Trip Thomas there in the middle. And for this performance today, shouldn't come as too much of a surprise for anybody that's been paying attention. I mean, this is a unit that went on the road last week and gave Angelo State all they could handle. That was the top defense in the country. They scored 42 on them. Zeman struggling to make it back to the line of scrimmage. He does not. Loses a yard. I love the gloves on Trip Thomas. You see that, the bright orange gloves? And it's clear, right, when he's sending in the defensive signals, yeah. hey, it's a great way Over to stand here. out. Yeah, right here. Watch me. Like, like catchers painting their fingernails. There's some swag there. Yeah, look at the, I mean, the sunglasses. The facial hair, too. Yeah. Second and 11. Toka flips it. Mason Karp at the touchdown on the last drive. Karp staying in bounds. Across the 35 with a first down. Well, the NCAA Division II National Championship game is next Saturday. 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Looks like Mines will be there to battle the defending champion, the Ferris State Bulldogs from Big Rapids, Michigan. 
Tony Anise's team victorious over West Florida earlier, 38-17. First and 10, Colorado School of Mines. At the your digger, 39. Whistles blow before first down at the 39. After review, replay indicated that the runner stepped out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Okay, then. Remember, we have a replay official starting in the Division II semifinals, <laughs> Brandon Moore. Now I the, just love the look on his face. The follow-up there is, was that <laughs> well, first down? <laughs> exactly. Adjusted all of this. We're going to have to figure right, out. Right. Take right. another look again at whether or not that was a first down, as now we see the. It wouldn't be. A drive start at the 25. He stepped out the 31. He'd be short. Let's see. Uh, That's, did he step out? Well. After the chain reset, it'll be third and five for Colorado School of Mines. Well, the crowd loves that. Cameron McNee, the referee, finally got the name of the school right. <laughs> so instead of a pickup of 15, it goes for six. Third down for Mines. Tristan Smith goes in motion. John Matoka escapes the pocket and pulled down from behind, lassoed by Kyle Smith. The sixth year senior whose terrific career will come to an end here today. 34 and a half sacks in his career. I wonder if that's the last we will see of John Matoka in this game. A lot to play for, obviously, next week. This game looks to be in hand late, late in the fourth quarter. Not sure you need him in. Is that Michael Zeman, Josh Johnston, Max McLeod? Don't we see any more of them. Is, whoop, almost got that. Click got it away. Dorsey, the fair catch inside the 25. 8.50 to play in Golden. 45-yard punt. Love the history on the walls here at Marv K Stadium. Goes all the way back to when they were wearing leather helmets. A lot of that was just before you got to North Texas. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, okay. I've taken all the shots at my poor Rice Owls Fair all play. game. Okay, I get one. I have one. been complimenting Rice get one. all game. Wow. First down for Shepard at their own 24. Tyson Bajant, flag is down, and the play is whistled dead. False start, offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Will be fascinating next level how this progresses for Tyson Bajan. He's going to start preparing for the NFL draft, and we've spent a lot of time talking about how unique it is to have a quarterback at the Division II level going to the Senior Bowl. That's a big award and a big honor for anybody at any level, because anybody that doesn't really know about the Senior Bowl and what it's about, it's less so about the game itself and more about the time all week with the coaches, with the coaches that are there, talking with scouts, the face time that he will get. Ronnie Brown trying to dance, and Mines shuts him down. The face time that Tyson Bajant as well as Joey Fisher with the Hula Bowl. That is really valuable time, and it'll be interesting to see how he tests it. Their pro day, a lot still ahead for Tyson Bajant and Joey Fisher. Obviously, today didn't go the way they expected, but what a special year it's been coming back, turning down the offer from Maryland, turning down the offer from West Virginia, and how much he means to this Shepard program. He said his heart was at Shepard. Maryland really had his attention. He was ready to compete with Talia Tonga Bailoa, but wanted to stay at Shepard, just thought it was the best fit after all. Second and 18, Bajan now in his own end zone, tosses it up and over the head of Michael McCook, the son of head coach Ernie. Third down. So Bajan stays at Shepard, and he realized, hey, I can still make it to the NFL from Division II. All 32 teams 
have made their way to Shepherdstown, West Virginia to observe Bajan. He is on their radar. Yeah, and I think that was part of the clip. If you haven't seen the full clip, go find it on Twitter for the Arisa Senior Bowl when Jim Nagy goes and tells Tyson Bajan he's going to be in the Senior Bowl. He talked about that. He said in the speech, you had an opportunity to leave. You came back to fight with your teammates here to try and go win a national championship at the Division II level. Jim Nagy was talking about, I like that. Scouts and teams are going to like that. It's one of the more unique stories in all of college football this season. Prior to the delay of game, timeout, Shepard, their first charge timeout of the half. Bajan had only two Division I offers coming out of high school in Martinsburg, West Virginia, just 10 miles away from Shepard University. Albany and Robert Morris, both in the FCS, had offered him. And Bajan said, you know what? Yes, I'm hurting. West Virginia didn't offer me a scholarship. Dana Holgerson was the head coach at the time. Marshall didn't offer him. JMU didn't even offer him an FCS power at the time. He said, I can stay home and I can air it out. I can have fun at Shepard. <laughs> He's put up the numbers. He broke the NCAA record for career touchdown passes at all levels. And now he's going to the senior bowl out of Division II. It really is mind boggling. It really is. It's very special. And talk about the growth and the things that are going to happen after he gets done. There's, there's room for improvement, obviously, in everybody's game. But there's going to be things that he got away with some at the Division II level that he will have to tighten up, certainly, at the next level. And that's true for Division II, FCS, Division I, FBS. Doesn't matter. There's huge leaps up to NFL. But again, we take a look at Division II postseason, some of the players that are going. The Hula Bowl is another one, another opportunity to be in front of scouts and teams. Third and 18, Bajan running around again. He's dropped another sack for Mines. Ben Fuchs with his first sack of the season. Loss of eight, and Bajan slow to get up. I know Tyson Bajan wants to stay out there as well. I wonder if that's the last we see of him. Talked a lot about how much there is to look forward to in his career. I think maybe you're Ernie McCook. Thank him for all he's done for your program, and you're going to have to pull him out and say, I, he, Tyson Bage is going to want to go back in. This is the last game of his college career, maybe for his benefit. And he's protected, and we don't see him again. Ryan Barrick from his own end zone. Another punt that mine's nearly blocked. And it's out of bounds. And around for the 45 yard line. Seven minutes to play. Mine's up 44-13. So we've been talking about Blaster the Burrow here in the second half, one of the great mascots in sports. Mark Kay, the legendary head coach here at Mine, said that he represents the hard work, determination, dedication of the students, and yes, the early ties to the mining industry here at Mines and in Golden. That, 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 the merch that we see with that logo on it. So good. Man. So good. Incredible. And yes, Blaster is here in person, just beyond the west end zone. Chris Yu on the carry for Mines. Evan Foster. And Evan Foster, yes, Taylor, is checked in at quarterback. You see back up. Junior, Olaf Kansas. Special for him to get into a playoff game, a late playoff game, semifinal appearance. His last action came in Mines' 80 to nothing win over Fort Lewis in the regular season finale. He went six for six for 60 yards and a touchdown. But now getting a chance to be on the field in a national semifinal. That's cool. Oh, and Foster might keep it here. He does flip it at the last moment. Caught by Landon Walker. The RMAC Offensive Freshman of the Year who has battled turf toe in the playoffs. And a couple third down. Still the majority of the starters in for this Shepard defense. Well, Brandon Moore told us 
things could have taken a dark turn, starting 0-2 with losses to Grand Valley State and Angelo State, a pair of Division II powers. He huddled his coaches like, what, what are we missing? What's going wrong? And the more they thought about it, they realized, hey, this was tough competition. We are heading in the right direction. They've won 12 in a row, about to make it 13. Foster scrambles on third down, and he's dropped after a gain of three by JT Kwame Yao. Brings up fourth down with 5.20 to go. I also thought it was interesting, because we asked him, like, you lost to Angelo State in the second game of the year. How special was it to game have the three. chance to beat them this past week? And he kind of glossed over it. It wasn't really a, something that stuck out in his mind. That was just the next opponent. And he felt like, yeah, we should have beat them in the second week of the year, but we weren't doing the little things right at that point. And we got another crack at it. I thought that really spoke to this program is dialed in on what they can control, and it's all about them. And whoever the opponent is that, that week, that's just the next man up. Fourth and five. Click the punt. Angled out of bounds. Fisher walks it up across the 20. And Shepard will have it at the 30. Just a 19-yard punt. Blaster the Burrow. You're about to go to the national championship game. Get your ticket booked to McKinney. East of here, the Denver Botanical Garden. So festive this time of year. Mines up 44-13, Shepard taking over. Tyson Bajan is still in the game for the Rams. And the carry by Ronnie Brown for a couple. Blaster the burrow. Mascot for Colorado School of Mines. 44-13, the lead for the ore digger. Can't get enough of Blaster, Taylor. No. Ever. <laughs> just, you know what? We need to set up one camera on Blaster and just have it picture in picture. <laughs> Second and seven. Brown again. Cutting it to the outside. Nice block by Max Fisher. Ronnie Brown took it for 75 earlier, trying to hurdle Jackson Zimmerman at the end. He's out at the 37-yard line. I didn't know, almost like that old... Antonio Brown, Spartan kick to the punter. <laughs> Can't clear you, so how about a knee to your forehead? A tiger knee like Sagat in Street Fighter. <laughs> Ronnie Brown's going to end up with a nice day next to that 75-yard touchdown. Close to 200 yards on the ground. Bajan gives it to Avon Holly, the bigger back. And Holly is inside the 35. You now, Shepard was looking for their second ever trip to the national championship game. They lost in 2015. This is their second straight semifinal appearance. They've been four times in the last eight years. Yeah, they were blown out today on the road. There is nothing to hang their head about, though. Team that started 10-0. Lost their only game in the conference championship and made it back to the semis. Uh, they, they ran into a buzzsaw today. This is a very good Colorado School of Mines team. That they're getting to play at home, and they have gotten better as the season's gone along. They're playing their best football in the month of December. Uh, third time, Bajan has mishandled the snap, does execute the handoff, and Holly picks up a yard. Tyson Bajan, the all-time leader in the NCAA in touchdown passes will end up with a rough stat line. But Tyson Bajan is on his way to the NFL and should become the first Division II quarterback to be drafted since 1999. There's no one him. He won't be able to forget the four turnovers he's responsible for today. Third and six. Give it to Holly. And taken down at the 30, three yards short of the first down. This Mines team will turn their focus next week to the national championship. McKinney, Texas, just up the road from you. In a high school stadium that costs $70 million. Yeah, it looks like a college stadium. It basically is. Basically, it's effectively a college stadium. And 
Should have a really good contingency of, of fans there for Mines, yes. given all the <laughs> alumni that are in the Texas. <laughs> like we talked about, they recruit half their roster from Texas. Fourth and three. Agent gives it to Holly, no chance. Turnover on downs to end the day for the Mines defense. Jaden Healy with the tackle. Record-setting crowd here at Colorado School of Mines will not soon forget this day. Nerds rule. Oh, yeah. Love it. You bet they do. That's a great sign. Team full of engineering majors. Guys that, according to their coaches, they just love the game. Most of them aren't even on scholarship. Partial scholarship at best. Only 36 scholarships are available at the Division II level. These players come here thinking about the rest of their life and the career they can carve out with the education they receive at Mines. Just so happens, pretty good on the field too. They executed their game plan to a T. All of the things that this staff talked about with us throughout the week, they did every single one of them. They controlled the line of scrimmage. They ran the ball well on first down. They converted when they took their shot plays. And the number one thing they said they wanted to do, they wanted to just allow Tyson Bajant one read on passing downs. And boy, did they do that. Got after him all game, forced turnovers, and now rewarded with a trip to the national championship. Tyson Bajant's career comes to an end. We will see him on Sunday soon enough. Today belongs to Mines. Colorado School of Mines has struck gold. For the first time, the Ore Diggers will play for a national championship. Mines will battle Ferris State, the defending champion in Division II, next Saturday, 1 Eastern on ESPNU from McKinney, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. How special does this feel for Brandon Moore in his first year as the head coach? First year as a head coach, and again, they lost their first two games. They, wish they started 0-2 with a first-time head coach have rattled off 13 straight wins. It's the latest they've ever played in the history of this program, latest home game in the history of this program, first ever appearance in the national championship. And that guy right there, John Matoka, he may be your 2022 Harlan Hill Award winner. The Division II Heisman, the Harlan Hill, will be announced on Friday, a day before Mines Plays for it all. Matching up with Ferris State from Big Rapids, Michigan. A lot of these players will have finals early next week. They already took a final yesterday. Got their Saturday finals moved. Don't think they'll be studying the next few hours. At least not tonight. Although, you know what? At this place, some of them might. <laughs> Next stop, McKinney. On to the national title game. Mine celebrates in front of a record crowd here at Marv K Stadium. The defense sacked Tyson Bajant eight times. Bajant on his way to the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. But Mines is on to McKinney, Texas. On the strength of their defense and the play of John Matoka, who threw for five touchdowns today. This was also a team, well, really both of these teams, plus 15 in the turnover margin for Shepard, plus 16 in the turnover margin for this Mines team. And what happened today? Flawless, clean sheet, zero 
turnovers for Mines. They created four on the defensive side against Shepard. 